Hi witches! So, uh, this past weekend, I went home to go visit my mother, and she's she's doing great. Um, but while I was there, I grabbed a bunch of stuff out of storage, including all of my old witchcraft stuff that I was convinced I had completely thrown away or that my parents had thrown away. And there's a lot of stuff in here that I was like very convinced and in fact have said on here, it was like, oh, it's gone forever. Um, but I found it. So I thought that today I have so much stuff to go through with you guys, uh, but I thought I would just show you some like pieces of my old practice. Now, when I was practicing before, I was like very strictly Wiccan. Um, I didn't really get into like like non Wiccan witchcraft until kind of like later high school, early college. So a lot of this actually comes from when I was in middle school. So I was like 12 when I started um, like really learning. I would say I was 13. I initiated on my 13th birthday, which is where I get my 12 years of practice from. Um, but I'm, I'm sure I've been practicing longer than that. I just, I use my 13th birthday as kind of like my date, if that makes sense. Um, so I have a ton of stuff from back then. I'm going to show you guys. I have my first ever grimoire. It is so crazy to look at and see how far I've come. So um, let's just go ahead and dive in because I think this is going to be a really long video. All right. The first thing that is coming out of the box is, of course, tons of bones. I literally found all of these in the woods. These are, I think, primarily from squirrels and like other small like field mice, rodents, stuff like that. Um, then I have some antlers. To follow up with my pile of bones, this is a piece of art that I got. Sorry for the reflection, you guys, but doesn't, doesn't someone look familiar? Um, I guess Anpu or Anubis has been with me for a lot longer. I bought this, I think, when I was like 14 years old, um, using money from like babysitting. So it's interesting to look back as I've started working with these deities um, to see their influence on my life over the past 12 years. Because if you'd asked me back then, I would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I just think it's cool. But in reality, I think it was like a, a little nudge that I just was not able to see. Speaking of nudges from deities that I didn't understand until I was an adult, um, I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, so this, I don't know if you guys can see it super well, but um, this is a key that I used to wear every single day. In fact, the class broke and I did literally fix it with a safety pin because I was super punk and like 14. Eh. Um, and I used to wear it on like a little chain because I was not allowed to wear a pentacle. So instead of wearing a pentacle, I had my key and I don't know why I was drawn to this or I didn't know why I was drawn to this beautiful little key, but being a practitioner who now <laughs> works very prominently with Hecate, I, uh, I understand. I just wasn't able to see. And I plan on actually fixing this and making this back into a necklace that I can wear because it's just, it's nostalgic. I literally used to wear this every day to the point that this was silver or like silver plated and my body heat like turned it this like weird color. So yeah, <laughs> I think I got this at Michael's. It really wasn't that expensive, but it's still really cool. And it's it was nice that I was able to find this because I really thought it was gone forever. So like, I definitely cried when I saw this. <laughs> Next is something that's really funny, I think, to me. Um, and these are herbs that I grew in my garden that I, th these are super old. I'm probably gonna throw these out. They're, I mean, unusable, I believe. Um, but I grew some sage in my garden, as you can see, not white sage, common sage. Um, then I had a ton of rosemary. My mom used to grow rosemary um, on either side of our front door and she didn't know it was protective magic, but it was. Um, so we have some rosemary and mint. It, I think, did I show you guys this one? Some mint, um, some more mint because I grew a lot of it. And like, I even made my own little labels back then too, which I think is so funny. Um, and for stuff that didn't have tops, I covered like this definitely needs to be thrown out. Um, but I used to cover them with cloth because I really liked the way that like medieval jars looked when they had that. So that's what I did. Um, more. I don't even know what this is. Definitely, definitely throwing that away. And then this is cool. It's technically, it's empty. Um, but I just, I have always loved really cool bottles. This is for some sort of like picture chemical, but I just, it's from like the early 1800s. Got it at an antique store and it's been part of my, I keep it with all, or I used to keep it with my collection of jars. So it, it is special to me. I don't know. It looks kind of witchy. Um, this is my first ever, this is like one of the first things that I ever actually remember buying for my practice. And I know it seems a little bit weird. It's just a candlestick. Um, but I think it, it was important to me because I was like one, two, three aspects of the triple goddess. 
I, I was 13, so please remember, this is like very childlike thinking for a reason. I was literally in middle school, couldn't even drive. Um, but I used to use this and I would have like a really long white taper candle. Um, and then I would have a shorter one because I couldn't find, it was only one of these. Um, and I would use that to represent the God. So this was like my lady. And then the other one was for the Lord. And I, I think that one got broken a while ago. I didn't see it amongst my various things. And I was really sad. <laughs> Next, I have this cute little teacup and saucer that I'm going to put on my ancestor altar. It was a gift from my great grandmother and um, she loves snails. So it had like a little snail on it. And I just, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my altar right after this video. I'm really excited. I think it's so cute. So the reason that a lot of the stuff like I've forgotten about um, or I just like did not know where it was or I was convinced that it was thrown out is that when I moved out of my parents' house, I was basically given 48 hours to pack my shit and get out. So everything was just thrown into boxes. I was like, oh my God. Um, but I did it. I got a U-Haul and I moved myself out. So, uh, so uh, apologies for the chaos, but that's just my practice. Now, I'm only gonna go through a little bit of this cause there is a lot and I don't even know exactly what's in here, but based on what I'm seeing, um, this, I need to clean off, but this is what I used to make moon water out of. I love, I've always loved little jars like this. It reminds me so much of the Galadriel thing where it's like, things that are, things that were, you know, when she has that scene with Frodo. If you don't know Lord of the Rings, don't worry about it. Um, but that's why I bought this. So I was making moon water with this. You can see it has like candle drippings on it. So I'm definitely just gonna clean the wax off. Oh, oh my gosh, okay. Um, this is a chalice that I used to use for Hearn and I don't remember where I got it. I want to say at a Renaissance festival, but this is the chalice that I used to use for giving him offerings and that will go back on his altar. This stuff is like so random, um, but these are things that I made in high school. We did like a clay, like a pottery unit. So I, I sucked at it. I don't like doing pottery. It made me very anxious. I don't, I just didn't like it. Um, but I did make these two things as offering dishes and I actually used to use them to like burn candles in. Like I would put like pillar candles or like votive candles in here. Um, oh, and it looks like there's a shell from my great grandfather. He lived in California and I inherited a lot of shells from him. So I have like all of them in here, it looks like. Let's see, hold on. Oh, Lucko the Irish, you guys. Don't know why I have that. Um, teeny little jar. I've always been obsessed with jars. And yeah, here's like a bunch of these really pretty shells that I have. Um, I am not sure what I'm going to do with them. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I have literally had this since I was like four years old. Um, one of my friends gave me like, this is back in the 2000s when body glitter was like really in, so don't judge me. But I always thought it looked like um, like fairy dust or something. And in fact, I think that's what it originally said on this bottle. So I've just always kept it because I thought it was pretty and I'm probably still gonna keep it because I think it's, <gasps> oh my God. This is the level that I had to go to to practice witchcraft. So I just, I don't know. The dedication that I had when I was like 12 is a little bit scary but this is a stick that I f like, I don't know, sanded down, I guess, um, to make into an incense burner. And I don't know if you guys can see like the little hole there, but that's like where the incense goes. So um, yeah, I wasn't allowed to buy an incense burner. So I freaking made one and my parents like couldn't say anything about it. They're like, I guess it's art. <laughs> Um, I have tons of these like little jars. I think I've just always been obsessed with jars. This has bird seed in it. I guess I just thought it looked creepy. I don't know. I do, I do know that I did a lot of stuff because it looked cool. So, you know, 14 year old just being edgy. Oh, oh, haha, -ha, that's actually really cool. Um, this is tangled up and I'm gonna have to untangle it, but I made myself this necklace out of this shell, which I thought was really cool because it reminded me of a, a hagstone, even though it's a shell and I know it's a shell. Um, but this blue necklace, oh, I don't have to untangle it. This is from my great grandmother and I thought I had lost it, but I'm really, really glad. I am gonna untangle it a little bit later, but oh, look how beautiful that is. Uh, she had all this really amazing costume jewelry, so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't know that it's actually like a semi-precious stone or anything, but it's really nice to have. So good to have. This I got and I haven't used it yet. I was going to use it in my grimoire, but alas, I didn't. Um, but this is from my trip to Colonial Williamsburg when I was like, I don't know, like 12, maybe 12, 13. So right before I started practicing witchcraft, um, during this trip, I also got that silver chalice that I use a lot in my my various altar setups, um, or it's, it's technically pewter, I guess. Um, but yeah, so fun trip. Definitely an interesting trip. Got a lot of stuff for my witchcraft practice while I was there. More bones, you guys, but at least I was organized. I kept them in the little bitty bags. 
Now in the final box I have, I have all of my books that I used for witchcraft. Um, and these are an assortment of books. So these are just things that I found and collected. Guys, another bone. I don't, I don't know where they're coming from. Um, <laughs> next I have the Spiderwick books. I have a lot of children's books in here simply because they're beautiful. I also have the field guide, but that is in another box. But yeah, I, I really love this book. Again, I know it's a children's book, but it has all these cool little letters and all sorts of like just fun stuff inside, beautiful illustrations. And I, I love the outside. It just looks like kind of like a, a field guide or a witchcraft book of some kind. Now, this is one of my prized possessions and I have been itching to get this book back. Um, this is a book on the tarot. And if you guys look here, I'm gonna show you the inside cover. Um, the copyright is from 1918. So I got this book for like 30 bucks at an antique store. Um, literally, I, I, I had I had to get it. I had to get it. I saw it and I was like immediately yes. So um, one of my prized possessions and I can't, I am so happy I have it back in my witchcraft library. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Um, I think I, I remember telling you guys that this is like my favorite book of all time. I, this is my, this is a second copy of it. This is my original copy of um, Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia for Magical Herbs. So proof that I have been using this book for a very long time. You can see that e like the uh, pages are a little bit dog-eared. Um, it, it's just been well loved. So I'm happy to have a second copy. I might just give my new copy to somebody else and go back to using this one. I also had tons of books like these that were given to me. So like the sign and symbols source book, I think that they're good to have for like general reference. And when I was first practicing, I found this book was really good for cross-referencing and beginning my research. Um, because again, it gives you a general like overview, a small um, kind of like you know, blurb about what each symbol is, but it doesn't give you like a full article. Um, so again, super good for reference um, and beginning research in case you guys are curious or if you have this book yourself. And along those lines, I was also given a lot of books like this, like The Girl's Guide to Dreams or The Vampire Book. I actually got this in um, Hungary, which is really cool. And I know it seems like it's not really witchy, but um, look at that. Look at Edward Cullen. But the reason I keep this book with all of my witchcraft stuff is because it has this awesome section of like vampiric myths and legends from all over the world, including like Africa. This one they talk about um, deities associated with blood, which is kind of interesting. Um, the fae folk, they talk about um, all sorts of like different creatures. Uh, fa fairy folk of Celtic lore, they have um, African legends and stuff like that. So yeah, I have a lot of books on like dreams and mythology. Here's another vampire book. Um, I was just really into it when I was like 12, 13. So please don't hold it against me. I also just unironically love vampires anyways. Um, now I know I just showed you uh, Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, but this is another one that I used to use to cross-reference. This belonged to my grandmother and it has a lot more, um, it has just way more herbs in there. It does not have magical correspondences, but instead medicinal and growing suggestions. Um, so, so I feel like this just kind of highlights my general um, proclivity to having magical and mundane information on hand whenever you are working with herbs. Just something that I recommend. So these are cool. These were given to me from my great grandfather after he passed away. It is two books on Celtic art and Celtic knotwork. I used to use it a lot to make offerings for the Morrigan. So these are just super cool. Not really sure where um, they got them. More stuff on ancient Egypt, which I thought was really interesting. I was obsessed with ancient Egypt as well as some ghost stories from Hampton Court. These I both got in London and took home with me. So very grateful that I got to see them. But but I will say I would like to see some ancient Egyptian um, antiquities returned to Egypt where they belong. Okay, winding down to the last couple books, I have some more campfire ghost stories, which I thought were just like interesting folklore type things. Um, and then a guide to the Rosetta Stone, which is how we um, deciphered hieroglyphics, which is super duper interesting. Um, and then I wanted to show you the two like true witchcraft books that I was able to have in my house. As a reminder, I was not allowed to practice witchcraft when I was growing up. I had to go to the library or use online resources, eBooks, audiobooks, and stuff. So I wasn't able to have a lot of physical media in my house. So unfortunately, these are the only two books <laughs> that have survived. So good old To Ride a Silver Broomstick by Silver Ravenwolf. Uh, I literally, I think I'm going to reread this as like a non-Wiccan witch and just see. I'm just really curious to reread it and see what has like stuck with my practice. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then this is Celtic Magic by DJ Conway. Again, I do not remember a whole lot from this book, but 
Being from Llewellyn, I have a feeling that it does have a lot of Wiccan themes. Again, we'll probably have to reread this, but from what I remember, it was very confusing. But then again, I was also in middle school, so who knows, maybe it actually does make sense and I just like was not able to comprehend it. Um, now we are getting down to some of like what I think are the most interesting things and these are my old grimoires So I'm not gonna show you too much of the inside. This is one of them here I'll just kind of show you like I used to write down all of my spell work and stuff if you guys pause to read you can There's not a whole lot of interesting stuff in here. Um, so this is this one. I think was like closer to um, Like college like late high school early college. So no earlier than 17 I would say um, so this is this is like my most recent scent of the old grimoires that I have. Um, then a little bit before that I have, and I'm not going to show you this one page, but I did draw this and I have um, this other grimoire of mine. You can see I did like a table of contents. I wrote down all sorts of like types of witchcraft, types of witches, tools of the craft. Um, let's see, what does this say? The Book of Shadows. Um, so I really, I tried to go back through, this one has like correspondences for air. So a lot of people ask me like where I get a lot of this information. I've just been doing this for a very long time. Um, <laughs> and I know it's a shitty answer, but this is like, I would say circa 14 or 15 years old. Um, so like sophomore year of high school is when I made this. All right, enough of me rambling and going through memories. The piece de resistance the original Book of Shadows. Now this is something that I made when I was literally 12 years old. Like I was a child, um, I couldn't drive. I had to like find all of this stuff like online. And I remember like sneaking down to like print this stuff out. Um, like, like I will show you, I still have a page. Like quite literally what I would do is just like copy and paste information from like what I thought were relatively credible sources. I have no idea this one. What is tarot? To people unfamiliar with divination, it may seem that someone who reads tarot cards is predicting the future. However, most tarot card readers will tell you that the cards offer a guideline and the reader is simply inter interpreting the probable outcome based upon the forces presently at work. I don't think that's too far off when it comes to describing tarot, so at least I know I was like on the right track. I definitely misinformed because I was again 13, 12, 13 years old, um, but I wanted to show you some of what I was working on. Um, so again, I have this. I don't know if anyone remembers the, the Theban alphabet, but I literally wrote like Book of Shadows on the side in that. I actually learned this whole alphabet. I taught it to myself so I could write in code. I There's a reason I didn't have any friends. Um, drew stuff in it. That's how I, I guess, perceived myself as both being very effeminate and then having like masculine traits, which being a non-binary person, I'm like, duh. Um, <laughs> but let's see, I have, this is, so this is like the first page, my dedication, and this is like the first thing that I did, right? So I studied for a year. It is quite literally the first page, my dedication to witchcraft. So this is like, this is literally, this is where it started. This is where it all began 12 years ago. Oh my gosh. Um, so I just, I thought that this would be good to show you guys. I also did, um, I painted a feather for the Morrigan and I painted a feather for Hearn. And then I was really into moths. So I painted that. So anyways, just lots of stuff in here. Thank you guys for sitting through me rambling at you. I know that was probably a long video, but I thought it would just be cool um, to show you some of the stuff that I had in the beginning of my practice. Now, of course, I did collect this. I started at 12 and I got out of that house around the age of like 20. Um, well, I, I moved out when I was 20. So, so while I did collect a lot of the stuff in high school, there was some stuff that I collected as an adult as well um, over about eight years. So I did, I did amass lots of stuff and I now have a whole room of witchcraft because I have no self-control. Anyways, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Thank you for watching this video and experiencing this with me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.